Hi, here we are again with Harry Dahlia from Real Estate and Beyond, and Harry's our, our referral partner for property management. We love Harry. Um, as he says, tenant's scary, call Harry. But the point is, is that if you're a landlord in this business, you need to really understand the legalities that, that a landlord is responsible for, which means also your property manager. So Harry's going to be here today, and, and again, if you've not watched some of the other videos with Harry, please do. But Harry's going to be talking to us about the actual documentation that landlords not only should have, but they better have. So Harry, take it away. Good afternoon. My name's Harry from Real Estate and Beyond. Nice to see familiar faces in the audience. Um, Linda asked me to talk about documentation needed for landlords. Uh, as you know, you can get very buried in the in in, in paperwork. Uh, my company, you know, we try to ease the paperwork for you. I'll load it up uh, online and all that. Uh, I've been doing. I've been a real estate agent for like 16 years. I've been focused on uh, property management for about eight years. Um, so, people are like, why did you go in property management? I like it. So anyway. Uh, let's go right into documentation. Um, when you buy a property, uh, one of the thing, one of the first things you got to do is when you buy it, you have to register it as a rental. So how you do that is uh, if you want to do it on your own, or we can do it for you. You go to uh, Maricopa County Record. There's a form you got to fill out, and you register it as a rental. Versus uh, a lot of times when I get uh, single family homes. One of the first things I do is I check the Maricopa uh, tax records to make sure it's, you know, a lot of times, uh, a lot of times they'll actually say it's a residential. So when you're renting it out, they want it registered. And why do they want it registered? Because they want to collect tax. Um, another thing that you want is a lease application. When you have tenants that are, are you know, you buy a piece of property, you want to make sure that you know they are filling out the lease application. Uh, a lot of times, my lease application it asks a lot of questions because I want to know what my tenants are all about and who I'm, who am I putting in there. Uh, let's see, you know, basically, you want to know their name, you you want to know their birth date, you want to know their social security number. Funny thing is, now on leases, uh, I talk to uh, the collections agency that I deal with. Uh, they actually want the lease and they actually want their middle name in the lease now because they go all the way up to the judge you know because a lot of times you know they'll actually get lawyers uh, she said as of last year she actually had a case denied because uh, it only had the middle initial really yeah so now we kind of take an extra precaution we put the middle name in the lease now so yeah that's the little things that you uh, know about property management and then once you have the lease application, of course, you do a background check. I use a system called Propertyware. They're publicly traded. Uh, they do everything for me. They do a background check, national background check. And also, if they have rented, you know, because they're nationwide, if they've rented anywhere else, like in Arizona or Oklahoma or anything like that, there's an extra page, you know, I'll actually say, would you rent to this person again? I just had a person uh, rent a North Phoenix property, and it said, yes, we'll rent again. Now, that doesn't happen to every every tenant, but chances are, you know, because you know, property where is sold all over the country, they pull all that information together. That's one of the advantages of working with property work. So this tenant rented rented a rented an apartment building in Scottsdale, about nine hundred bucks a month, and the you know the survey said yes, we'll rent to this person. So that's kind of nice. And again, credit report each applicant. Uh, a lot of times when I look at the app, you want to keep this in your file. A lot of times when I run a uh, credit check, do I look at credit score? Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Depends on the property. The reason why they want to rent is because they can't get a loan. But what I do look at is I do look at their collections. Do they pay their bills on time, like a car, car or a credit card? Are there any medical, uh, outstanding uh, medical debt and all that? Because um, a lot of times these people will collect on that and then get a judgment that interferes with their payment. I had that happen uh, last year. This, uh, this lady had a lot of debt. I existed, I, I got it under property management before from another uh, person. 
and the lady ended up uh, was looking at the, the they, they released it out to her and they ended up getting a judgment, 400 bucks a month. They had to pay back the medical and that really affected her uh, rental and she had to move. So a lot of things when you look at the credit report uh, and then we do a criminal background check. We, it, it, it does a national background check. Um, sometimes, you know, some property management companies will go into the uh, superior court system and that is only good for Maricopa. So they'll punch in the person's name and they'll check to see if they have any records or anything like that in Maricopa. Well, what happens if they just moved from California and there's no record, but it might be a child monster or, you know, a sexual offender or something like that or, the, you know, they have a felony. So we check for that too. It's a national, national background check. And then, of course, if something comes up, we call the we call the tenant and say, "Hey, um, can we just verify if this is true or not?" And then I'll say, "Well, that was my that was my son." Okay, can you prove it? And then we get further documentation. So we're you know trying to get as detailed as possible. The rental lease agreement. Um, that's another documentation that you want. You want a lease that favors the landlord. Um, if when you buy these generic leases, like know from retail stores or online you got to make sure the clauses are in there now the lease that I have I've had mine for eight years and I perfected it tweaked it over the years yes but I've never lost in court every time when I go to the eviction it's a solid lease nine times out of ten um, it's overpayment not not paying rent so the first thing the judge asks is Mike did you pay rent no <laughs> over yeah, but he didn't fix this, he didn't fix, well, you gotta take that to another another case. Right now it's just because of the rent. And they, I've never seen anybody go after a landlord because they didn't fix repairs and stuff like that. Um, and you know, they, this take, uh, the lease that I have, it takes care, kind of like, uh, if you don't mind me uh, using it as an example, Mike. Mike owns a property and we're having a little issue with one of his tenants, is you know, keeping the area clean. Well, in the, in, the, in the lease, it specifically says you got to keep the area clean and neat at all times. Well, he's working on cars, and he's got a 7-ton AC unit on there. So what do we have to do? You know, Mike's in a situation where, you know, do we get rid of the tenant, or do we kind of, you know, force him to, uh, to obey the law of the land and make sure the property is clean? So we kind of, you know, we're going to try to... Watch closely, and if he doesn't, I mean, the owner's gonna have to make a decision. Say, you know what, this ain't worth it anymore. It's not worth it to me, and not worth it to you, because now I got to spend more time on the property going by to make sure he's appealing to the law, which is, you know, he's trying to sell the place. He wants to make it look nice. So that's another thing. You got to make sure the clauses in your lease agreement fit fit the area. And I've pretty much got every clause in there. I got the uh, I got the HOA. I got uh, any fines from the um, from the city. Uh, we got a pool addendum, which I'll have down here. So this is very important. This is what starts starts the process. It's got to have a start date, an end date, the dollar, and, that, and each thing has to be signed. It's got to be it's got to be properly filled out. And I just scan it, and then I just leave it into the owner's portal. And at any time you can have access to it. Okay, crime free addendum. This is another um, one that's nice. Um, say, for instance, you know, I manage a lot of apartment buildings. You know, sometimes, you know, I'm in Sunny Slope or sit in certain areas. It doesn't matter where you're at. If they do any crime on the property, like sell drugs, anything crime activity, felt, if, you know, if they bring somebody that has a felony and they cause damage and stuff like that, this gives you the ability, the choice to do immediate um, eviction. Now, when I say immediate, um, it doesn't mean they're out the next day. You still got to go through the same process, but you can you can uh, file an immediate eviction. It takes about a week, just like it does like the normal eviction. But you can actually get that person out faster. And nine times out of ten, they don't show up to court because they know what they, they know what's going on. And you know, I even ask the you know if it's a police officer involved, I'll say, would you be willing to testify? Yes, as long as you got a police report and stuff like that. You send it in, that's what the lawyer wants. And then the lawyer, when you do that, nine times out of ten, the lawyer wants me, the property manager, to come down to court to testify. And I'll do it. Uh, I, you know, we try to clean up places. And a lot of times I use this when I inherit a property. I have to clean it up. 
so when I clean it up, you know, I look for this. You know, is this, is this person causing trouble? You know, and then, of course, you're going to have uh, other tenants at larger complexes. They'll they also say, hey, so and so is doing this, so and so is doing that, and then I kind of, you know, you got to watch them. But then you got to work within the law too. You just can't, you know, accuse them. It's innocent until proven guilty. So it's a lot of work with the tenants, the the um, police officer, and the local. Uh, person who's in charge of the community. So a lot of communication. That's a that's an important one to have in your lease though. It's nice to have. And the city of Phoenix actually likes property management companies that actually um, enforce this. Pet animal. That's a big thing right now. Pets. Um, it's okay to have a pet. More people have pets than they don't have pets. So when you rent out a property and you say I don't want no pets, they're kind of that, that kind of lowers your your rental pool. So we have to, you know, as an owner, we have to identify, you know, do you want pets? Do you want don't want pets? You know, the good thing is, you know, the, we were just talking about this last month about having a rental pet, a monthly rental pet fee on top of the uh, pet deposit. A lot of these apartment buildings now, you have to put like a two or three hundred dollar pet deposit, and they charge you anywhere from twenty to forty bucks a a pet per month on top of the normal rent. So, yeah, in my pet addendum, you know, I talked with a lawyer and all that, and you, and you gotta watch out with your insurance company too. When you have uh, apartment building, a lot of times they don't like certain breeds of dogs, pit bulls, Dobermans, Akitas. I think there's like three or four other ones that are on my pet addendum. But they, they, you know, pretty much I don't, I don't allow those in the homes or anything like that. Only because, you know, if something happens, and most of the time you'll have something in your uh, homeowner's insurance policy, it'll actually, uh, you can't have those on your property. So that's the great thing. When we work together, the insurance company that we use, I've known the guy for eight years. I mean, actually, when Linda and I first got together, I said, why well, use Tom? Well, I know Tom. I use Tom, too. So, you know, it's a matter of asking questions and getting educated on all sides. So I just, you know, we decided to put a pet policy in place at our company, and we make sure we enforce it. And if there's a, you know, if we find out there's a pit bull there, well, then we got to give another notice. You got to give a 10-day notice. You could give a five-day because that's fire and safety health, but I try to give it 10 days. Um, your move-in, move-out checklist. When somebody moves into your property, a uh, great thing to do is take pictures, and then what I do is I give them a sheet like this, when, the, when, when we sign a lease, and it says on the bottom, it says, you must turn this in within 72 hours of move-in. If you don't, then you accept the property as, as is. What does that do for you as an owner? Well, the, you know, a lot of times, you know, they'll, you know, they'll go around and they'll say, well, there's, you know, there's a nick there, and this was chipped, and stuff like that. They'll get nitpicky, because so, they don't want to be charged at the end. But it's good to have this, because and you go back when you do a move out, you take this out and you kind of go, oh, okay, this was here, yep, yep, oh, yep, there was a dent in the fridge, yep. Uh, and then that way it makes it easier. Now when they accept it as is, there's no way to, they can't negate anything. You, you, you didn't tell me this, you didn't hand the sheet in. So we use the sheet on the move out, very helpful. Because you always got to think, even if they stay two years, three years, four years, they're, they're going to they're gonna mess up the problem. So you as a landlord, we try to, you know, we'll say, okay, I was just say for Mike, Mike and I, we're like, you know, if somebody moves out, we'll say, hey, Mike, these are the things that you can uh, legally charge back the tenant. And they might ask me a couple of other questions. Well, have you thought about this? Have you thought about that? Hmm, I don't know. Let me get back to you. Then we finally get to a final number, and we're like, okay, out of the $1,000, uh, we'll give them $300 back, and we'll charge them back for this. <coughs> and there's another form I'll let which is uh, down the road here. Your rental sales tax. Um, that is when you know you have a property, uh, you have to register within the city. Uh, just say for the city of Phoenix, uh, the property tax right now is 2.3%. So every month you should be paying that. You have to register that with the city. Uh, I have a chart back in, uh, in the office Maybe I'll give it to Linda. It has every city and every every rental sales tax. Every city's different. Sometimes they're lower, higher, Mesa. Um, as long as you abide by this. 
Now, another notice is a five-day notice. So say, for instance, um, your tenant doesn't pay within a certain time period, you can either hand deliver this notice or you can actually certify mail it. Now, depending on the person I'm dealing with, sometimes I'll actually hand deliver it. Because if they hand deliver it, then like we're dealing with one right now, we hand delivered on the 6th, we can actually, we, we could have uh, started the eviction on the 11th. But we're still dealing with that. When you do certified mail, say for instance you set it out, you sent it out on the 5th of the month, if they don't pick it up, the law is they have 10 days. So on the 5th, I can't start the eviction until the 16th. But if they pick it up, say I send it on the 5th, and I always check these, I always check the labels. If they pick and if they sign for it on the seventh, they have seven days from the seventh. So if they haven't paid the if they haven't paid the rent by the twelfth, then I can start the eviction on the thirteenth. So I use Hall Holiday and Holiday as my as my as my lawyers and I'll actually print that sheet out for them. There's a whole thing you you know, you gotta you gotta uh, get the judgment, the lease, the five day notice and a ledger. And I'll actually do an extra step for them. I'll actually print out when they sign for it, so so they don't so they don't question it. So they process it as soon as possible. Because now you want these people out of here as soon as possible. Because now they're costing you money. They're not paying any rent, and they'll stay there. And the, you know we uh, sometimes you know the tenants will, the tenants know they they know the law better than than the landlord, and they'll actually wait until you know they do the judge. You file on the 15th, you get a court date on the 22nd, then you got five days to move out, that's the 27th. Well, they know the law. You can't kick them out on the 27th. Now you have to order what's called a writ of restitution. There's another week. Now they get to stay another week for free. It's endless. So, that's the beauty. Some of these other notices, um, I didn't want to put per slide. These are just some of the things I use for my for my company, what we do, my partner and I. Um, a lot of times you can do a 48-hour <coughs> access notice, like for Mike. Mike wanted to get in this property last week, so on Wednesday at nine o'clock, I went over there. I gave everybody notice. So when he went there Friday morning with my handyman, <coughs> I gave my handyman the copies of the notices, and that way there's. That way he can get in there legally and say, okay, I'm going to inspect my property. Okay, this one's looking good. This one's looking good. Oh, this, ooh, man. Oh, oh I got to do this. So, if, you know, a lot of times I use this when people are not paying rent because I want to get in there. And I can do it legally. All I have to do is put that on the door. <clears throat> and if I have to, I'll, you know, um, if they change the locks, I'll, I'll drill the lock and I'll get inside. I will get inside. Uh, partial payment agreement. A lot of times, you know, we work with tenants. Sometimes people, sometimes things happen in these tenants' lives. They lose their job. Uh, they get divorced. Uh, they're with their boyfriend and girlfriend. And they split up. Somebody dies in the family. They got to move out of, you know, they got to go out of town for a little bit. If you accept one dollar, say the rent is five hundred bucks, you ex you accept one dollar. Now you got to wait the whole other month until you can, uh, and then you gotta start the whole process over, give them a five day notice and everything. If you do a partial payment agreement, if I take one dollar, and if I say, okay, you have to pay the four, the 499 plus the $85 late fee on the 15th, if they don't pay on the 15th, I can just send that in. It, it waives their right, and I use this a lot. Um, five day health and safety, that's another good one. Uh, a lot of times, you know, if they have uh, pit bulls or, you know, if the property's not cleaned up, a lot of times I deal with the city. Like, can I have dealt with the city? I'm dealing with the city again, beautiful city of Phoenix. Um, they'll check the properties. The neighbors will call on such and such a property, and then the city will, and then the, the owner calls me, and then I deal with it. And then you, and then tens out of, ten times out of ten, I will give this to the uh, tenant. I'll hand deliver it. I'll go by the property, take pictures. And if they don't, you know, if they don't do it within 10 days, then I just take them to court, and then they're gone. And the judge will say, "Oh, is it, is it in this property, in this condition?" And, you know, as long as you show them proof and pictures and plenty of pictures, I just take my tablet and say, "Here you go, judge. This is the way the property looks." And he'll ask the tenant, "Does it still look like that?" I said, "Yep, judge. I just went by there this morning. Look, see the timestamp. 
All right, boom, get them out. Uh, 30-day termination of lease. Um, when you don't want somebody there and you want to do it peacefully, um, we can just do that. You just give a 30-day term termination of lease. If their lease is ended and if it's a month to month, you still have to give them a 30-day termination lease. So say, for instance, their lease ended in September. You know, Mike and I are talking about one person. Maybe we don't want them there in December. So, you know, two days before the month of December, I just knock on the door. I give them a 30-day termination of lease. And I say, you've got to be out by December 31st. Uh, we just did that at another apartment complex that we did. Um, sometimes you want to mix, mix the personnel up. Sometimes, you know, if you got too many people there, sometimes you gotta, you got to fit people with people. And, you know, it's a good way. I mean, maybe this person has not paid rent on time for like the last three or four months and you're kind of getting, you're kind of getting a feeling like something's going on. It's just another good way of just saying, you know what, this ain't going to work out for me. So I'm going to give you a 30 day termination at least. Um, and they'll ask me why. And I just say, well, that's what the owner told me to do. I work for the owner. So I take, you know, if you hired me, that's what you, I do for you. We talk about it and just say, just take, just take care of it, Harry. And I go out there and, you know, they'll ask me all these 20 questions. And my bottom line is, that's what he told me to do. So please abide. You still got to pay rent for next month. If you don't, we're, you know, we're going to give you a five-day notice. If you don't pay, we'll evict you. So it's up to you. The abandonment notice, um, I use this. I use this in my back pocket. Say, for instance, you. Um, what I like doing is, say you terminated, or you got the eviction, and the person has left, and he hasn't given you the key. Um, a lot of times, what I do is this uh, to save you an extra money in order, in order, instead of getting the writ of restitution, which takes the same amount. I put this on their door and I certify and mail it to them. Once I do that, five days later, I can go in there legally. So I just saved you about 225 bucks. Still the same amount of time. Actually, I can get in there quicker with an abandonment notice than I can do with a rest, re, real restitution. Now, there, I know pretty much every constable in town. I know who I can call right away and say, hey, Mr. So-and-so, um, can you check tomorrow's court and can you get that for me? Yeah, no problem, Harry. My favorite is Doug Clark. I'll say, I'll say it on film. Mr. Clark, Mr. Clark is the best. I just give him a call, first name basis, and I say, hey, can you check for that? He'll give me a call. Yep, it's here, Harry. What do you, want? you want to do it today? You want to do it tomorrow? Oh, can we do it before Friday, sir? No problem, Harry. Can you send somebody over there? Yeah, I'll get somebody over there to change the locks. So it's nice to have relationships in this business. Another one is to no, uh, notice to increase rent. Uh, I'll use Mike again. Mike uh, came to me and said, hey, I want you to increase the rent 75 bucks for, for the three tenants because they're a month to month. All right, no problem. Okay, next month they're all paying 75 bucks. How much did that raise your uh, 225 bucks now the next month? Because he, he was looking at his rent roll and he's like, I'm, I'm not making enough here, so I gotta increase the rent. All right, no problem, boom. And if they don't pay, then you don't take the money or you do a partial payment, you take the money until they get the difference. <clears throat> but either way, you, you're gonna get your rent increase. If they don't like it, you know, you can, they can say, you know what, I'm gonna give a 30 day notice. I'll pay you this month's rent, but I'm leaving in 30 days. A lot of times they say, they don't wanna want move. Uh, the security disposition letter, um, this is what I was talking about before. When you do the move in and move out checklist, when they move out, you know whether you know they just end the lease, you're getting evicted. Uh, you know what? Either way, when they move out, I just pull out the sheet and then I look at what they have, what they don't have, and then it itemizes everything. It'll say, you know, the owner's name, the the leasing name, the le the the tenant's name. A lot of times they don't, they don't give me a forwarding address, so I have to use the address that I have on file. Well, that that that's the one that they just rented out. So, <clears throat> um, especially when they know they're not getting the security deposit back, you still have to do this because if you don't do this, the tenant can come back and say, "Hey, look, I didn't get my I didn't get my security disposition letter." Then you got there's a penalty of three times the the uh, security deposit. 
So this is just like a formality for me. You've got to do this within 14 business days. Not 14 days, but 14 business days. And trust me, if the you know if it's a good tenant, I do it automatically. We go there, we do we do the move out inspection, and we just send it out. I just mail it out and I put a copy in their in their folder. That way they can't say he didn't send it to me. Well, that's that's my practice. My practice is when you move out, I'll get you one of these within 14 days. And a lot of times I'll tell the owner, hey, look, I wouldn't give back anything. And just let me take care of it. Okay. So boom. All right, done. Because you need that money to, to rehab the property now. So, uh, let's see. Oh, thank you. Boy, that was quick. Okay, do you have any questions as far as any other paperwork, anything like that? I know it was kind of quick. Well, not too quick. Just, uh, <clears throat> yeah, lease application. You know, of course, you're going to have your LLC paperwork in line, um, your EIN number, uh, your taxes at the end of the year. We send you your statement at the end of, at each month, and then I'll give you an annual statement of your breakdown of your expenses and your everything. That way, you can just take it to your CPA or your tax tax accountant, and you'll have everything there for you. Um, just trying to think any other paperwork you guys would need. That's pretty much what I deal with every day, pretty much on a monthly basis. Is this type of paperwork? Are there other forms? Yeah, you can do a 10-day. You can do a 10-day uh, form. You know, say for instance, somebody's not cutting their grass. You can give them a form saying, "Hey, within 10 days, uh, if it's not cut, I'm going to come back and find you." Um, but pretty much the forms that I said, the forms that I have here, that, that's what I pretty much use on a monthly basis. So that's it for me. If you don't have any questions. Thank you, Harry. What oh, the um, so the pet fee? Um, you can't turn down somebody with assisted animal. Can you charge them a pet fee? Uh, no. Okay. So only uh, non-assisted animals. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then the thirty-day notice, um, whether it's a lease or a month, uh, still within the lease or month to month. Is yeah, I mean you got to fulfill the lease. So if the lease is uh, say it's January to December. If you don't want that person in there after December, then you have to give that lease on November 30th. Right. You can actually hand deliver it on December 1st. Okay. Because there's 31 days in the month. Yeah. But I always try to do it the month before so there's no close lines. Okay. So you can't do it within the lease? No, the well, lease, yeah. Unless it's month to month. Obviously. Correct. If it's month to month, then you can do that. And same with rent increases, only on a month to month lease? No. Yeah, on a month to month okay. lease, or you renegotiate the lease. And then have you ever had anybody with the 48 hour notice, you get there and like you're not coming in? And they're standing in the like... Yeah, twice. I had to call the cops. Okay. That's and then usually my handyman's there, the Bob or Rich, and they know the drill. We've been working together for eight years and they just wait. Yeah. The cops come, they're like, hey, what's going on? And I, sh you know, I show them the notice, say, hey, look, I got to get inside. The owner wants me to do an inspection and they're refusing, so I have the right to go in here. Yeah, you're right. Usually the cops kind of talk. They talk to the both tenants and say, look, you know, he's got to do his job. Mm -hmm. Are you trying to hide something? Do you have anything illegal, anything? Like, oh, no. So I just go and I look at it. And, yeah, people think they know the law better than you. So when they do it, you know, when I have questions, I just call Mr. I, I call the lawyers, either uh, Mr. Hall or Holiday and Holiday. And, you know, if I, you know, I don't know everything, but I've been doing this for so long. A couple times, you know, I'll say, oh, man, that's great question man. I just email them and within the you know within the within the day even that day because they're at court all day mm -hmm. but they'll actually get back to me probably you know a little later than uh, the next day and they'll actually tell me what to do like I had one uh, one incident two years ago I was in Glendale and these people one of the tenants her son got on the property he was a he was uh, not supposed to be there he had a felony well he brought some other kids to the property and they ended up shooting gun. And there, you know, it's a, it was a six plex, three three at the bottom, three on top. And the bullet actually went from one unit all the way to the next unit. And so I was like, wow, I'm freaking out. What am I doing? What am I going to do? I was like, so I, I, I you know, I, I normally when I have an incident like that, I kind of sit down and I write down everything that happened. 
kind of like an incident log. That's what I was training in corporate. And then I give it to the lawyer, and he'll actually look at it, and we'll say, okay, this is what you actually need to do. So I followed his step-to-step -step process. And luckily, you know, nothing happened. Those people were done. I got them on the crime-free addendum. And then the other people, they were revolting, and I gave them, you know, I took them to court too, and we, we, we had a pretty much clean house after that incident. But, uh, you know, the owner...